So at the outset, I wish to thank the whole organizing team for uh, inviting me, giving this opportunity, and a big congratulation for a wonderful conference. And I'll be speaking on adolescent type two diabetes. As my previous speakers have very well explained about the Modi and the other forms of uh, young diabetes. So, like, what are the types of uh, young diabetics we see? We know that diabetes is a global emergency, and India is not lacking. And we are we are in number two now. But initially, the diabetes, which was considered as a disease of the elderly population, but now as we have seen the the onset of diabetes has come almost a decade earlier even we published our data from the gwalior we have seen that there was almost a decade earlier onset of type 2 diabetes in the younger population less than 40 years <laughs> so as per definition the diabetes in young is defined as the onset of diabetes less than 35 years of age and this is an emerging disorder in the children the adults and in young adults and they all have the unique challenges in both research as well as in clinical care so to carry on the discussion forward let's take an example of these four hypothetical patients and if you can see these four patients they have a a1c of around 10 so somewhere between 9 to 10 the fpg and ppgs are almost equal in all the four cases but do you feel that the type of diabetes is same in all the four patients no not necessarily though they are the age wise the fpg ppg wise or the a1c wise they are similar but they might have a different type of diabetes so let's see how we can differentiate or how we can make a differential diagnosis So the scenario is changing, and young, as we have seen, that it is a growing prevalence in the type two diabetes, and the prevalence of youth onset type two diabetes is increasing worldwide in parallel with the obesity epidemic. As we know, that there is an epidemic of diabetes, diabetes and obesity. So the different types of diabetes which we see in youth is type one diabetes, which we are seeing day in day out, and we know that how to differentiate a patient of type one diabetes. Then we have a monogenic diabetes, uh, which was initially termed as MODI, and we had a good discussion on MODI. By my previous speakers, uh, Nehal sir, Nehal Thomas sir, and Dr. Arun Pandey sir, and then we have a type two diabetes, that is early onset type two diabetes, and we can have other forms of secondary diabetes in young, like the FCPD, drug induced diabetes, or diabetes that is secondary to endocrinopathy. So we know that the type that it's not only the prevalence of type two diabetes or young onset type two diabetes increasing, even that there is increasing prevalence of type one diabetes in children at all sense, and this is a global prevalence is increasing uh, of the type one diabetes. But there is an emergence of type two diabetes and pre-diabetes in youth. As we know that there is uh, obesity is increasing in young population, particularly in Indian and the Asian countries, even the European and American countries. And if the interventional studies for the reducing the obesity is not done, these all all adolescent or young population will develop type two diabetes at a later age. So what are the different risk factors for type two diabetes in children and adolescents? One is the obesity. We know that is an epidemic of obesity in the adults and even the school going children. Then you have a genetic predisposition and the family history. Children born small for gestational age, newborn macrosomnia of the diabetic mothers, and premature adult in girls. So, like there are some risk factor for developing diabetes in the young population. If we talk of the etiology of the genesis, it is same as the the uh, the responsible for the diabetes in the uh, elderly population. So, like pathogenesis is almost the same, but there are some key drivers for the development of type two diabetes in young population. One is early life determinants like changes in intrauterine environment, maternal under nutrition, and over nutrition. They might be associated with increased risk of obesity and then later on development of type two diabetes. Diet, increasing consumption of energy dense foods, reduced physical activity. The children and the kids are there more on the mobile, more on the apps, more on the computers. So there is a lack of physical activity, which is responsible for weight gain, for weight, for for the visceral fat gain, and ultimately leading on to the insulin resistance and type two diabetes. Some socio-economic factors might be responsible. Female sex and PCOS. Again, there is a there is a preponderance of insulin resistance in this population, and again, they are at a risk of developing type two diabetes. Non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. It seems to be a stronger risk factor for young onset type two diabetes than for type two diabetes that develops in middle age. Saying that the patient was diagnosed almost 17 years before as a type 2 diabetes, and then he was on the insulin, on the different OADs, and is still not controlled in last 17 years. So that means the diagnosis was at fault. So maybe if we can correct the diagnosis, we can correct the diagnosis, and we can bring the patient to target. So if we can differentiate between type one, how to differentiate between type one and youth onset type two? Pathophysiology of type 2 diabetes, we know that differs from type one. You don't say type two diabetes is rapidly progressive beta cell decline. So in over a period of time, maybe after five years, ten years, they might be having a reduction in the beta cell. They might require the insulin therapy. And there is an accelerated development of diabetic complications. 
And when you talk of the treatment options for a youth onset type 2 diabetes, they are ineducate, limited to two approved drugs, only insulin and metformin. So like we have to see that what is the correct diagnosis and what we can place. As Nihal sir was saying that the, the, the patient for the Modi, they uh, respond well to the uh, glimmer command and glimmer pride. So that there are some differences in the clinical criteria between type 1 and young onset type 2 diabetes. We know that the type 1 diabetic patient, they have autoimmunity present, but it's not present in young onset type 2 diabetics or even type 2 diabetics. And the role of insulin in the management, yes, for type 1. But for the young onset, we may require in patients who are on the rapidly progression, uh, progressive uh, beta cell failure, they might require almost around 50% of the patient may require insulin at two to five years of diagnosis. But in type 2, yes, there is a gradual progression of the beta cell failure. So this may take longer time to require insulin therapy. As, as the another form of diabetes which we see in the younger population is MODI, and it has been discussed very well by my previous speakers. We know that is an autosomal dominant inheritance. And there is a uh, multiple types of the MODIs uh, as, and as for the like, genes involved has been explained. Uh, Dr. Pandey has shown his cases, 26 cases. So the mode of inheritance, it is monogenic, autosomal dominant, age of onset in MODI, it's childhood adults and whereas to differentiate it from type 2, it is usually obese. But to differentiate between MODI and the, and the type 2 diabetes is that the patients are not obese and the patients might uh, having a family history of the in three generations being like father and grandfather or grandmother. So in three generations, you have a family history of diabetes, presence of diabetes, and no marker of insulin resistance. And if it, the, like in the body evidence, yes, they are non-obese of the MODI, whereas in type 2 diabetes, usually we are obese. And they, they, if we talk of the dysmetabolic syndrome, in MODI it is absent, whereas in type 2 diabetes, it is usually present. So phenotypic expression and natural history of MODI, it is under the age of 25 years, and non, not progressive or slowly progressive, so like there are different types of uh, body which we can differentiate by the, the gene testing and then we can plan the treatment on the basis of that. Then you have another form of diabetes which we see in younger population, there is LADA. This is a latent autoimmune diabetes in adults that is, uh, aut there is a form of autoimmune that is our type 1 diabetes which is diagnosed in individuals who are older than the usual age of onset of type 1 diabetes. And the alternative terms that have been used for LADA is type 1 and a half or slow onset type 1. But often patients of LADA are mistakenly thought to be have type 2 diabetes because of their age. So age is not a criteria, but what is the pathological mechanism for uh, the LADA? They are a genetic susceptible, moderately type 1 diabetic. They have a specific trigger. They have autoantibodies like the GED antibodies. So that leads to the beta cell apoptosis and insulin deficiency. Whereas the type 2 diabetics like they have a genetic susceptibility, obesity leads to the low grade inflammation, leading on to the island autoantibodies formation. There is an accelerated loss of beta cell function and ultimately they all lead to the LADA. So the potential pathology, this is the potential pathological mechanism for LADA. So what is the contribution of type 1 and type 2 to all cases? We know that 95% 90 patients are, are of type 2 diabetes, 5-6% patients of type 1, type, type 1, but there is some overlap between type 1 and type 2. So the key difference between type 1 and LADA is not the age. So we can see LADA even at the age of 45 or 50, but the gradual way of the disease progression and most cases with LADA are aged more than 35 years. So the diagnostic features for LADA, their age 30 to 35 years, presenting as non-obese type 2 diabetes, initially controlled with diet plus oral antidiabetics, early failure of the oral agent, so maybe over a period of one year, two years, they might be not be controlled with OADs and they may require the insulin therapy. Most type 2 diabetic patients do well on the oral agent for several years, but not the LADA patients. So the insulin dependency within months is a diagnostic feature or is a, is a criteria for LADA. Ketosis may or may not be present, low fasting and stimulated C peptide levels, no clear cut diagnostic criteria. ND, GED antibodies and island cell antibodies positive. So to differentiate between type 1 and LADA, yes, we can differentiate the, with the age diagnosis. Usually the LADA is more than 30 years, whereas the type 1 is in the childhood. Autoimmunity severely increased in type 1, but it is it is also there in LADA, not in type 2. Onset of type 1 is acute. Usually patients, usually children, they present with a DK, whereas it is not the case with the LADA. Insulin dependence in type 1, it is at the onset, whereas in LADA, it may take 4 to 6 months, even years. And BMI in type 1 is underweight to normal, whereas in LADA, it is normal to overweight. Risk of metabolic syndrome, there is no nothing in type 1, but in LADA, there may be increased. So another form of diabetes which we uh, young uh, which we see in young population, we type one, the type two, uh, early onset type two, Modi, Lata, and then this is secondary form, FCPD. So for the FCPD, patient should be from a tropical pregnancy. Diabetes should be present. Evidence of chronic pancreatitis, abnormal pancreatic morphology on the USG or the CT scan. Patient usually present with recurrent abdominal pain and steatorrhea. 
abnormal pancreatic functions and absence of other causes of chronic pancreatitis indicates that this patient might be having fcpd so coming on to the entire how to make a differential diagnosis if you have a patient of the onset of diabetes less than 35 years of age what to do first and foremost we should go for a family history of diabetes if it is positive and if this family history is positive in three generations and ketonuria is absent c peptide is good response to the oral drugs it is modi you can you can have a rough guideline from this this graph and then you can send the sample to the uh, genetic testing uh, though it is costly but if you feel that it is yes, you have a clinical uh, diagnosis of modi you can send for the genetic testing if the family is positive but it is not present in three generations ketonuria is absent c peptide is good and patient response to oral drugs he may be early onset type 2 diabetes and you can have the 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 uh, peripheral markers of the insulin resistance like acanthosis or least intake but if you have a negative family history and ketonuria is positive c peptide is absent that indicates that patient is type 1 and then we can go we can go for auto antibodies it may be antibodies negative so it is idiopathic if it antibodies are positive it is autoimmune type type 1 diabetes so if the family history is negative ketones are absent c peptide is poor but if we go for abdominal x ray we can find that the pancreatic cal calcification pancreatic calcification at the level of l1 it is indicative of fcpd and if the pancreatic calcification is absent in the abdominal x ray and pancreatic calculi are not present we can go we can think of mmdm so in this way we can we suppose we have a patient of young onset type 2 diabetes uh, we can differentiate not about type 2 diabetes but young onset diabetes b type 1 b lada b modi b early onset type 2 diabetes on the basis of some just just a good history a uh, pedigree as uh, nyal sir was saying a pedigree history family history patient's history clinical examination then comes the investigation and baseline investigation not very very uh, say uh, very high fi or very costly investigation initially on the basis of that you can have a judgment that this patient might be from this category then you for for a confirmation di diagnosis you can go for the uh, investigation maybe antibodies maybe genetic testing and uh, just a plain x ray might help in some patients of fcpd so the complication if we see in the early onset diabetic is associated with a greater lifetime risk of diabetes related complication because they have to live long with that diabetes so like they are uncontrolled suppose a patient develop diabetes at around 27 years 29 years and the life expectancy is 80 years he has to live with this life for almost 50 years so the chances of developing a complication with the longer duration of diabetes are more in this younger population and the uh, young onset type 2 diabetes is a much more frequent occurrence of the macrovascular and microvascular outcomes and more rapidly progressing severity of complications additionally impaired hearing reduced fertility risk of premature decline in cognitive functions psychological issues they are frequently observed in these type 2 diabetics and these can be substantially reduced reduces the quality of life so we if we come back to our four patients those have a similar apg similar ppg similar a1c if you see this is a 10 year old boy who was auto antibodies positive absent c peptide diagnosed as a type 1 this 18 year old uh, old girl uh, overweight obese with the markers of acanthosis on the just family history as uh, type 2 diabetes a 15 year old girl with the same apg ppg and a1c but a three generation history of diabetes no peripheral marker of insulin resistance indicates it is a monogenic diabetes and an adult year old man with the apg ppg of the same range of the a1c of 10.2 but a pancreatic calcification history of estradiorrhea history of chronic abdominal pain indicates that this patient is fcpd so we can differentiate on the basis of that so to summarize and conclude the phenotype phenotype of young onset of diabetes if you see the stronger family history greater association with obesity early loss of both first and second phase of insulin secretion early onset and rapid progression of micro and macro complication poor sustainability of response to the oral uh, glucose lowering therapies and frequently necessitating early introduction of insulin so exploration of more effective ways to implement preventive lifestyle measures in the family setting and to improve the health education in the school curriculum because like the the pathogenesis of the early onset type 2 diabetes starts from the school going children we can find the school going children or adolescents who are in the 7th or 9th grade they are obese they are having a belly fat and more of visible fat and these are the kids where we can work on prevention of diabetes to prevent diabetes in the later life in the in the elderly or the younger age thank you very much for the patience here